Hi, this is Steven Estelle, and what I'm going to show you now is an impeller that was 3D scanned from one of our scanners here. So this is a video for Rapid Scan 3D. This is Steven Estelle, the applications engineer of the company, and I'm going to go over the whole reverse engineering process of this impeller. So right now you can see we went we went to Geomatic Design X, and we are now doing an auto segmentation of an STL of the impeller that we imported into the into the software. So what's going to show up is a, diff a bunch of different colorations of the different segments of the impeller that were all based off of different curvatures of the STL. And what we want to do now is group together a group of segments so that we can get a nice surface of one of the blades on the impeller that will be utilized later on. So right now we're going to do the positioning and alignment of the axis of the impeller so that we can work with it at the correct angle and view that we desire. So after we line it up, we can now work properly on the project. So now we're going to go about making the face of the blade. And we're going to use a mesh fit and we're going to select that group of segments that we utilized earlier. And that's where you get the nice curvature of the blade onto our impeller. What we're going to do next is take that surface and we're actually going to offset it about one millimeter to match the blade on the impeller. So now once we got the, the, the surface of that blade created, now you want to create an axis or a vector for the impeller, which will be utilized later on for the revolutions when we create the 3D CAD model of the impeller. We utilize the two, the two planes that are crossing the middle of the impeller to create the axis. So now we're gonna do a mesh, a mesh sketch. And what the mesh sketch does is that it projects the STL mesh onto a plane that we chose so that we could create a nice accurate drawing. Now what we're also using is a rotational method which takes a certain amount of sketches or a certain amount of the mesh and within a certain amount of angle and projects them all onto the sketch uh, plane that we decide to utilize. So now we're creating the arc and we're creating the lines to start developing the impeller. We are assuming that the top and the bottom line were intended to be horizontal as well as the line that's going to be in the middle is intended to be vertical. So right now we're lining up those two endpoints so that we could create an arc that's going to represent pretty much the curved end of the bottom part of the impeller. When doing this, you want to try to make sure that your drawing is as close as possible to the mesh so that when you create the 3D model, it's as accurate as possible. We're now going to start working on the other lines that we created.
So by use, utilizing the extend button in the top ribbon, we're able to make we're able to make all the lines coincidental with each other to make sure that our sketch is closed so that it can be revolved later on. So right now we're creating an arc for the round tops. And what we're going to do is after we create those two tops, we're going to make sure that the arc and the two lines that is connected to are actually perpendicular or parallel to each other. So now that we have the, the two ends of the arcs parallel to each other, we're going to adjust the arc to just about match the curve of the STL mesh file. So now once everything is in line, we're just going to do the trim function and take away all the unnecessary lines that are not needed. After that, we're going to hit accept. We're going to go into the model and we're going to revolve it 360. And this gives us the cone of the impeller. So now the next process will be to create the actual blade of the impeller. So we're going to utilize the same technique. We're going to use the mesh sketch setup and we're going to utilize the rotational method. And we're going to choose a plane to have our sketch. Uh, we're going to have the sketch projected onto that plane and we're going to get the silhouette range to be a certain amount of degrees. We want to make sure we're getting all the lines and the characteristics of the blade this time. That's what's being focused on as the degrees are being increased. Once we have all the outline of the blade in, we're going to hit, a, we're going to hit the check mark and we're going to start drawing our lines in different curves. We are now creating our base to the propeller blades. So we're making it perpendicular to that line we made on the side. After that is done, we trim off the line that we do not need. We make sure that the points are coincidence with each other, and then we go on to the next step. So what's going to first be demonstrated is this is what happens when you try to create a model when they do not intersect another model and you want them to be one complete part. So what we're doing now is we're taking that one sketch and we're actually revolving it so that it goes through those two surface, those two surface offsets that we created of the blade. So we're making it only go about 100 degrees. and we make sure that it intersects both of those offset surfaces of the blade. 
So as you can see here from the top, the drawing we just created does not just about intersect the cone of our impeller. So what's actually going to happen is that we're going to create, or we're going to try to create a solid out of those three surface miles that we made. However, it's not going to give us the results that we wanted because it does, it does not intersect the, the cone shape. So when doing projects like this, you have to make sure that all your models and surface and drawings intersect each other so that you can create an accurate 3D model. As you can see, because of that, there's, there's a hole in the blade, which is not exactly what we want. And even utilizing tools such as Extend Surface, the surface does not create an accurate model of the blade. So what we're going to show you now is an actual correct way to create the blade so that it is connected to the cone and creates a nice solid model. Even utilizing the other, the other tools such as fill face, the process will still fail. So what we're going to do is discard everything and actually show you the correct way to utilize the, the revolving surface and to create a solid blade out of this. So all you have to do is just extend that line to make sure it intersects the cone and then we're going to go through the exact same process and it'll be just what we want. So now that that surface intersects the cone, we're going to go through the same thing, go to insert, go under surface, and then we're going to go down to solidify. And then from there, we'll, we'll click on the faces that we want to utilize and hit the check mark. And now we have just about halfway through creating the blade process. Next thing we need to do is do a fillet. And with this tool, we're going to utilize the full face fillet. So we're going to label the left side, we're going to label the, the right side, as well as the center. So the next plan will be is to take the, the blade that we created and the cone and to do a boolean and to combine them together. So now we have the cone and one blade of the impeller. From there we're going to do a circular pattern of the entire 3D model that we have and we're going to circulate or we're going to circulate it revolve it around the axis that we have in the direct middle of the cone. And now we have the basic shape of the impeller. And as you can see, it closely resembles the mesh file that we were that we imported into here from the 3D scanner. So now we have to try to get in the, I guess I would say the the indents on the side, as you can see. So we're just gonna end up doing an arch and we're gonna do an extrude cut to take away from our 3D model to accurately represent the actual part. So we're going to create an arch on the top side, we're going to create an arch on the bottom side, we're going to close the sketch, and then from there we're going to extrude cut out of our 3D model. So now with our two closed sketch, we're going to exit the drawing, we're going to go to the model, extrude, from there we're going to click the cut, 
we're going to flip the side that it cuts on and hit it through all so that it cuts through our model and now we actually have those two curve extrude cuts through our 3d model so now there's one more thing we need to do and we need to take away a little bit off the top of the impeller so we're pretty much going to go through the exact same process however on this one we're going to actually create an offset plane because we're going to need to get that that curve from the STL mesh file so that we can accurately draw and delete that part on our 3D model. So we're selecting the plane that we're going to want the sketch to be projected on. And from there, we're going to choose the offset distance so that we can have the cross section that we desire. So we're lowering the plane that we want the offset or the cross section to be projected on. So once we found the cross section that we want to be projected on the plane, we're going to select one of the drawing tools, Spline, and to just copy the part that we need, we're going to create that and make that a closed sketch so that we can utilize it to make a cut extrusion into our 3D model and finalize our CAD model. So once we have that created, we're going to bring back up the solid model. And with that, we're going to go back to model, do an extrude cut, flip it, and we're going to make it come down as close as possible to the blades without actually touching the blades, which comes out to be about six millimeters. So we're going to accept that. And from there, we have our completed reverse engineered impeller model based off of the STL that was given from our 3D scanner of the impeller. So now what we need to do is just do a Boolean and to just merge all the different revolutions that we created to make sure we have a single solid CAD model. So once we do the Boolean, we're going to do check. And then that goes through and now we have a single CAD model with all the features into it. And this will allow us to export the entire piece as one solid file into SolidWorks. And as you can see, it closely represents the STL that was imported into Geometric Design X. So now we're going to hit the export button. We're going to hit the entity. We're going to hit check and we're going to save this as an IGS file. And from here on, we're going to import it into SolidWorks. So once we save that as an IGES file, we open up SolidWorks, and we open up the exact same file that we just created, impeller for sw.igis. So then if you want, you can do the run diagnostic. As you can see, there is no faulty faces because everything was done properly. And then from there you have the reverse engineered impeller that was 3D scanned on different software, reverse engineered on Geomagic Design X and brought into SolidWorks for further work if needed. And from this example, you can see by doing an extrude cut, the model that we imported is actually a solid file. It's not a surface model or anything else. So that was the basic instructions on creating an impeller based off of a scan data, an STL file, an STL mesh file. This is Steven Estelle with Rapid Scan 3D. And if you need any more questions or need answers, please feel free to contact us and let us know. Thank you for watching.